Hi guys, uh, welcome to a new video. In this video, I'll talk about uh, ANSYS software and uh, how to use ANSYS APDL to analyze a cantilever beam subjected to concentrated loads. Uh, and we'll be drawing the shear force diagram and the bending moment diagram. Uh, let's get into it. All right, guys. So we have the image right here. Uh, this is the cantilever beam. Uh, I have marked it as A, B, C, D, the four points where the loads are acting, the point loads are acting. The lengths are 1000 mm, 1000 mm for 20 kN and 20 kN and the total length of the cantilever beam is 3500 mm. Uh, next, to open the ANSYS AS software, you all you need to do is, if you have ANSYS installed, I already have ANSYS installed. If you don't know how to install ANSYS, uh, I have a video where I show you how to install it and how to download it and install it uh, so you can uh, look have a look into it otherwise after you have installed ANSYS all you need to do is go to search bar and type ANSYS uh, APDL or oh, sorry just type APDL and you'll get uh, uh, icon saying mechanical APDL you click on it uh, I already have it op opened so there is going to be one window like this do not close that window along with that there is going to be this window we are going to be doing the problem in this window. Uh, just have a look at the diagram or make a note of it to ease the process. Okay, let's get into it. Uh, so for the problem here, we'll assume that the cross section is a rectangular cross section of uh, 200 mm into 300 mm. And uh, the Young's modulus or the material that we have chosen will be steel. So the Young's modulus is going to be around 2, 200 GPA or uh, 2.1 210 GPA. So there's going to be 2.1 into 10 power 5 uh, Newton per millimeter square and uh, the poison ratio is going to be 0 0.3. Uh, with this, uh, we'll get started with it. First of all, what you need to do is uh, open your APDL software and go to file, create and start new. It'll ask clear database and start new and you click on do not read file. Okay, click on yes. So all of it gets refreshed once. And you can change the job name, change the title, you can give any name you want. So here I'm going to give it cantilever uh, point loads, point loads, uh, click on OK. After that, uh, you go to ANSYS main menu. Here, this is the main menu. Go to preferences. Here, we're going to be doing a structural analysis. So you click only on structural. We are not doing thermal or fluid analysis or any other electrical or magnetic, just click on structural, click on OK. After this, the structural, uh, what do you say, the structural base is laid out for others analysis to be carried out. Uh, now you go to pre-processes, that is the pre-processes that you need to take care of before you start the analysis, the material properties and all that. You go to uh, element type, in that add an element, you go to add here, in this, we are going to be doing it on a beam. So we have a cantilever beam. So we're going to be doing it on a beam. Select two node 188 beam. OK. All right. Then click on close. After this, you need to define the properties of the material. Click on material properties. Then you go to material models. And then here you need to define its modulus of elasticity and the Poisson's ratio. So go to structural, linear, elastic, in that it is going to be an isotropic material. Here is the EX is the modulus of elasticity. So it was 2.1 into 10 power 5. So you click E or 5. So E5 means 10 power 5. And uh, the Poisson's ratio PR was 0 0.3. Click on OK. And that's it. Uh, go to material and exit. So you have defined the material properties. Now in pre-processes, we need to select the cross section of the material, right? We had said that it is a rectangular cross section. So we need to define that uh, boundary. So you go to section to define the cross section. There beams. In that you go to common sections. So most common sections are most used sections. So it's going to be already laid out. It is a rectangular section here. If it was, a, let us say, a circular section, then you would have got a radius. So to that, you could you could change here. You can change whatever type of section you want. 
now we have selected the rectangular section so we need the breadth and the height for that we already told we have already considered that it's going to be 200 into 300 so just type that and click on ok so the the section the uh, rect rectangular section has been defined of uh, 200 into 300 mm um, area after this go to modeling go back here here there is another option called modeling see so the options are one after the another so it will not be very confusing uh, go to modeling in this we need to create the model we need to create the beam to that uh, for that we need to select key points so go to model create key points go to inactive cross section so now look at the diagram so this is going to be a first key point this is going to be a second key point this is going to be a third key point and this is going to be a fourth key point so the distance is remember the distance from this here fixed uh, surface here so from d you need to uh, map out all the other three key points so first key point is at zero so go to software inactive cs so key point number one the cross section is going to be zero 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 apply now key point number two that is c it is at a distance of 1000 mm in the x direction from uh, point d so that click on that then key point number three is at a distance of 1000 mm from point d and the total length of point a is at a distance of 3500 mm click on okay so you got four key points one two three and four uh, so it's a thousand thousand and three thousand five hundred so you have mapped out all the four key points uh, now you need to connect these th key points uh, with with the uh, through lines with straight lines you need to con connect these key points so you go to create so in modeling itself create in this lines again click on lines straight lines uh, we need lines from here to here here to here and here to here so you just select you don't you don't uh, type anything on this menu here that comes that shows up when you click on straight lines just select this node click, click on this node click on this node click on this node then again this node and this key sorry key points so after you click on all the four key points it shows lines of different color it's that's all right uh, the material properties are the same for all the three lines um, click on ok so now you have defined the line you have connected the key points through straight lines after this you need to mesh the uh, what do you say the bar so that uh, it is a final element analysis so you need to mesh it into different uh, cross section areas of small smaller cross sectional areas for easy analysis for that you after modeling you need to mesh it so you go to meshing first you need to define the size of the mesh so you go to manual size and global size and size here number of element elemental divisions let's say we mesh it into 50 parts okay so each line here each line here each colored line here is going to be divided into 50 parts after you have created it into 50 parts you click ok uh, now uh, we need to mesh it so we've decided the size of the mesh that is 50 parts uh, now we need to go and mesh the cantilever, cantilever beam for that you click on mesh uh, lines and then now you need to select the key points so 1 2 3 so 1 and 2 2 and 3 3 and 4 key points are selected so now the line is going to mesh click on ok uh, now we can see that we do not see the parts uh, the lines divided into 50 parts right so to see that you go to the ANSYS utility menu so this is the utility menu uh, you click on plot and then you click on lines so now you can see that it has been divided into each line each colored line has been divided into 50 parts okay now we have divided the line in 50 parts now we need to apply the loads um, so if we have a quick look at the diagram here so we can see that at point 2 there is 20 kN, at point 3 there is 20 kN and at point 4 there is 10 kN. Uh, go back to your APDL. Now uh, to apply loads go back to pre-processes in that 
you have an option called as loads go to loads and you have to define loads so to define loads you go to apply and uh, it is a structural load because we are doing a structural analysis on the cantilever beam uh, you click on structural displacement structural first we need to constrain this point one so to constrain that point one you go to displacement and uh, it is a key point we have we have uh, created the lines based on key points so click on on key points which key point are we going to constrain click on this key point so we just selected this key point one click on ok and constrain all degrees of freedom that way that point is going to be fixed so point one is going to be fixed and uh, click on ok so if you see these arrow marks or triangles on both x and y direction that means they are uh, that point is constrained in all all directions now uh, to apply loads go back to loads uh, and define loads structural but you go to force moment uh, in force moment again uh, we need to apply the loads on key points so click on key points so on key point 2 we need uh, 20 kN load so put a load of uh, click on ok uh, this is in the fy direction and it is negative because it's acting in the downward direction so click so you need to type minus 20,000 newton so it is 20 kilo newton that is minus 20 into 10 power 3 um, in the fy direction because uh, in the image you can see that it is acting in y direction and uh, uh, just a second key point 2 ok if y direction minus 20,000 20,000 click on apply so we have a load acting uh, of magnitude 20,000 newtons in the fy direction similarly we need to apply a load here at key point 3 again it's in the fy direction and the magnitude is minus 20,000 apply and there is one more load which acts at key point number 4 uh, click on ok and uh, it is 10 kN so go to APDL key oh, sorry APDL key points key point oh, sorry. key point number 4 ok FY direction is minus 10 thousand newtons click on ok so we have three loads applied here now we need to solve this uh, problem so we go to solution here we need to define uh, the type of solutions which we need uh, for that you go to solve current ls click on ok and you will get a uh, window saying solution is done after you have completed it click on ok so now we needed to find the shear force and the bending moment uh, which was created in the beam uh, when it was subjected to these three loads so we need to define those parameters that need to be shown in uh, in the software or by the software to do that uh, all you need to do is go to ANSYS general post post processes so this is the general post processor option click on that now you need to define what all the results what are all the results that you want to do that you go to define table so if you see if you have a define table here okay first you go to element table in that you will find define table so yeah you will find define table now you need to add what all the uh, solutions you need to for uh, bending moment you go to by sequence number select you can put bending moment here bm by sequence number in that SMSIC, uh, SM, SMISC, uh, here you type 3. Okay, and uh, you press apply. Again, go to bending moment. Uh, again, to get a bending moment, there are two parameters that you need to input. Uh, one is SMS, SMISC 3, another one is same thing which is by by sequence number SMS SMISC 16 after you've done that you can click, click on apply 
now to get the shear stress you do the same thing by sequence number SMI SC 6 number 6 apply and by sequence number SMI SC 19 okay so 3 and 16 are for bending moment 6 and 19 are for shear stresses so uh, just remember these two uh, after this you can click on uh, close now we need to see the results right so we go to plot results in that you click on contour plots and uh, in that you click on line element results here you can see bending moment bending moment uh, SMI, SMI SC3 we had given it as bending moment SMI SC16 also comes along with it you click on OK and you get the bending moment so this is the bending moment uh, which is shown across uh, the cantilever beam so we know that bending moment at the fixed end is going to be maximum so that is shown here and the, at the free end is going to be zero so that is also shown and the maximum bending moment is uh, minus 15 into 10 power 4 that is also shown and now if we want the shear stress uh, again go to line element result uh, shear stress is defined by SMISC 16 and SMISC 19 click on ok and you get the shear stress at different uh, key points in the cantilever beam so this is how we solve uh, or, or uh, get the shear stress or analyze a cantilever beam subjected to point loads at different points um, we get the shear stress diagram and the bending moment diagram by changing this one and you get that this is the bending moment diagram okay so if you want to get this in 3d that is in an isometric view and the whole bar the rectangular cross section of the bar to be seen all you need to do is go to plot controls here click on style and in that size and shape in that this one will be unchecked for you guys so it will be it is it will be shown like this for that you go to plot controls style size and shape and make sure the shrink entities is at 0% and uh, display of elements you click on on and you click apply after that you click ok and you close it we see that it's still not 3d uh, click on isometric view and make it isometric after that you go to plot controls click on animate and deform shape in this you click on de deformed plus undeformed so that you'll see the undeformed shape first and then the deformed shape also click on ok so now you can see that you can see the bar here so you can see that this bar is being subjected to the bending moment at all three points and uh, it is being animated here you can change the cycles if you want number of cycles all that uh, and uh, that's it so this is how you animate you want to see the stress distribution in three dimension across the beam what you need to do is you click on nodal solution and uh, in this nodal solution if you want to see the stress click on stress in that one minus stress so this is the one minus stress click on ok so now you can see the stress distribution uh, across the beam so the stress at the fixed end is going to be maximum so yeah that's how you plot the results and derive analyze a cantilever beam uh, which is subjected to point loads at different points uh, that's it guys uh, if you have any doubts do let me know in the comment section below i'll try and answer them thank you